Hello, critical thinkers. This is Professor Gifford, and I'm trying to give you an overview on your first essay. Um, this is essay one, and it is meant to help you get past some of the pitfalls and mistakes that I've seen in the past. Um, this is the first essay, and so I'm expecting that you will know um, a little bit about the format, but not everything. So when I look for a five paragraph or six paragraph essay and a thesis statement with um, explicit points to show that you understand um, the, the topic of the essay, um, I will guide you through this. I won't be um, upset when you make mistakes about format and um, uh, maybe some of the organizational procedures around writing essays, but I will still try to push you in the right direction. So. Um, realize this is a stage where you're kind of feeling out the class and you're feeling out what the expectations of the instructor are. I understand that. I'm trying to provide you as much information as I can to allay the fears while pushing you towards doing something that will give you a very good grade and make you a better writer. Um, so the topic is images that incite either anger or grief. When you look at the word or in the middle of a topic assignment like this, it means that you need to choose. You can't have anger in some paragraphs and grief in the others. You want a critical essay that talks about anger, 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 or grief, 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 grief. Uh, I know that makes sense. Uh, it says do one or the other, not both. But, you know, sometimes people will naturally start running into the uh, essay assignment and, and sometimes make a mistake that way. Um, one way that you want, might want to organize this is to get a bulletin board or a large sheet of paper and figure out what your overall topic is. Do you want to have images of anger that come from the Vietnam War? Then draw a circle, call it Vietnam War, and then have three different types of anger that exist. There's the anger of uh, civilians, there's the anger of the people back home, and there's the anger of the um, the people in the war, the people that are uh, prosecuting the war, the the um, Army, Navy, um, Air Force, that kind of thing. You can have a picture that represents each of those three things, and then write a paragraph about that. You don't want to start off with just three pictures that are randomly generated with nothing to unify them. You want to have either pictures from war or pictures from... Um, the Holocaust that uh, elicit grief. Um, I had somebody do a pictures from a yearbook that uh, el elicited grief. And they did a great job of showing how some yearbook photos are trying way too hard and it made you sad. <laughs> it was a really good, good effort. But they had uh, a series, this one not one image, but they had a series of images uh, and then they looked at the psychological uh, side of it. They, they researched uh, um, some of the uh, social sides of, uh, of uh, society and how we view uh, yearbooks uh, as that kind of time capsule to, our, to a great time in our lives. Anyway, uh, I just want you to know that it might be good to draw a circle and decide what images are you going to put into that circle. Images of war, images from yearbooks, images from uh, a terrible point of 9-11, from uh, um, some kind of school uh, shooting. Now, I'm not trying to make you all sad, but again, this is anger or grief, and so I'm trying to come up with things that might fit those that mold very well. Uh, environmental anger and grief. There's environmental anger from underneath the oceans, there's environmental anger from the wetlands, and there's environmental anger from the uh, Amazon or from the, um, the um, rainforest. Excuse me while I drink some coffee. Uh, so, just realize that that is part of the um, assignment to unify around these three pictures and do the best that you can to do so. Um, now, let's move this down. Um, you might want to consider organizing these by topics. Uh, and the World War I idea, um, you could certainly do um, um, a war, you could certainly do uh, any a traumatic thing that you could imagine. Like I said, um, the outlier, the uh, the yearbook, was pretty good because uh, I didn't expect it to be that sad. 
but um, uh, they found a way. Uh, choose a subject that can engage the discussion intelligently or creatively. Write about something that you know the basics of or that you're interested in. You need to become an expert on this by the end of um, you know by the end of the process. Um, you need to know uh, uh, how to cue your reader through the essay uh, with with uh, strong topic sentences. So, if you are writing a five paragraph essay, you need to have three strong par uh, paragraph beginnings that show you know, one, um, the images from the rainforests uh, elicit a great amount of anger from the viewer. Make sure you remind the people what each uh, body paragraph's about. Uh, at very minimum, you want to have three, because a five-paragraph essay is pretty much the minimum standard uh, in, in uh, critical thinking. Uh, if you want four or five topics, that's absolutely fine with me. Uh, you could have uh, rainforest, underwater, uh, um, wetlands, uh, Arctic. You know, you go into all these and show images and show how they elicit grief. That is absolutely fine with me. Um, if you want to stay away from environments and you want to stay uh, with people, it's sometimes easier to research the emotional uh, and psychological side, obviously, uh, of people than it is the the um, environment topic is very scientific. And so if you don't like numbers and you don't like digging into those, uh, those parts of science that, uh, that, that can prove that these are really something you should be sad about, uh, I would say uh, stay with, stay with uh, people. Um, because I've seen papers in the past that they talk about science, but it's all off the top of their head. Well, it's really terrible that they are doing terrible things and the wetlands are becoming are shrinking and I'm like, well, that's that's good, but explain to me how much they, they've gone from uh, 24,000 acres in Northern Carolina, you know, whatever it is, to 13,000 in seven years. That's an interesting point that might make me think, wow, we're losing something. I'm sad about this. But if you just say, and they're shrinking and terrible and, oh, I just don't know. Um, anything that is that you are not an expert in, if, if I were to sit down and talk to you about that you didn't know a lot about, you probably shouldn't write a body paragraph about. I know you, some of you can fill in the blanks and do an okay job, but I'm telling you, um, that's what I'm pushing you to do, um, and hopefully you'll get the message. So, from the hills above, uh, Santa Clarita, this is Professor Gifford signing off.